In this video we're going to be looking at how to make a salt. This video is made for NCA level 1 students who are sitting the external exam describe aspects of acids and bases. During this video you'll notice that in the bottom right hand corner there will be a set number of goals that will be updated as we attempt to answer this particular sample question. The question which I have provided is to explain how you could produce a salt magnesium nitrate and sodium chloride. Um, I've also included a set of bullet points here which um, we are going to try to aim to meet during the explanation of how we might answer this particular question. The first thing which I would do um, is to figure out which acid I'm going to use to make say the sodium chloride salt or the magnesium nitrate salt. Now if your salt is a chloride you'll always use hydrochloric acid. If your salt is a nitrate, you'll always use nitric acid. If your salt is a sulfate, you'll always use sulfuric acid. So if we were making sodium chloride, that means that we would definitely need HCl, hydrochloric acid. If we were making magnesium nitrate, then I would definitely need um, nitric acid. The second thing which I would do is to choose a base to react with my acid. Now for NCA level 1, the bases that you'll be assessed on are pretty much just anything with hydroxides. So OH, uh, carbonates, CO3 in the formula, uh, hydrogen carbonates, HCO3 and oxides, O2 minus, sorry. Um, what you need to be able to do is to look at your salt though and identify the metal ion that's present in the salt. And I'll tell you why exactly in a second. So for example here I've got NaCl which is the one in the question, I've got magnesium nitrate which is also in the question, but I've included CaCl2 and CuSO4 in there as well just as extra examples um, to reinforce the idea. Anyway, if I've got NaCl, the metal part of the salt is sodium. If I've got magnesium nitrate, the metal part of the salt is magnesium. In calcium chloride it's the Ca, in copper sulfate it's the Cu. If you're not sure which part is the metal, look at the ionic formula in the salt. Um, the metal ion is the part that's not, say, sulfate, chloride, or nitrate. So for example, here you've got chloride, so that's not the metal bit. It must be the Na, it must be sodium. The other thing you could do is that you could check um, that the metal ion you've identified is on the left side of the periodic table. It has to be on the left side. The first step uh, in your method is to write something like to produce the salt sodium chloride I would take 50 mils of hydrochloric acid and slowly mix in whichever base you want. Remember your base could be say the uh, hydroxide or a carbonate so if your salt was sodium chloride you would pick sodium hydroxide or sodium oxide or sodium carbonate. So here's an example. To produce the salt NaCl, I would take 50 ml of hydrochloric acid. We identified which acid we needed in step 1 and slowly mix in sodium carbonate. The carbonate, you could have picked oxide, you could have picked hydroxide, up to you. Unless it says in the question to pick something else, of course. Um, the other example in our question was to produce the salt magnesium nitrate. So I would write to produce the salt magnesium nitrate, I would take 50 ml of nitric acid, the acid we identified in step 1, and slowly mix in magnesium hydroxide. Again, I could have picked, say, magnesium oxide instead if I wanted to. I could have picked magnesium carbonate if I wanted to. Unless, of course, the question tells you exactly what starting materials you're going to use. After you mix your acid in your base or your acid in your carbonate together, you're going, to need to, um, you're going to need to describe any separation techniques. By separation techniques, I'm referring to either filtering your mixture or evaporating. Now, if any of, say, um, the materials you use to make your salt in step three, if any of those were a solid, you'll definitely need to filter that mixture. So you would write the resultant mixture is filtered through filtering paper and the reason for that is to remove any excess solid. So any, any solid which might be left over which didn't completely react 
um, you want to filter out. So for example, to produce the salt NaCl, I would take 50 mls of hydrochloric acid and mix in sodium, chlor uh, sodium carbonate. This means that um, you would write after that the resultant mixture is filtered through filtering paper to remove any excess solid sodium carbonate. That's only if, say, you use solid sodium carbonate. If you used a solution of sodium carbonate, then you don't need to apply the filtering step. The filtering step is just to remove any solids. After that, you will pretty much always use a evaporating method to separate your salt out, and that's because in all the equations that you've got, um, and you'll see this later on, they all produce water and all your acids that you're using in a school laboratory are pretty much solutions. So once your salt forms, you pretty much have to evaporate off the water. It's the only way to leave behind solid, uh, solid crystals of your salt. So you would write something like, the liquid is placed in an evaporating dish and heated to remove any water. In the end, solid crystals of sodium chloride are formed. Next, I would write the um, general equation that you need to make a particular salt. Now, at NCA level 1, you're pretty much only tested on acid and carbonate making salt water and carbon dioxide, and the second equation is acid plus base makes salt and water. Those are pretty much the only two equations that you need. Remember that carbonates, we're also including um, hydrogen carbonates and bases, um, we're referring to hydroxides and oxides. So for example, um, we said that to make NaCl we needed hydrochloric acid and sodium carbonate. This means that I would need this first equation here. This first equation here describes this method which I've picked for making sodium chloride. If I was producing the salt magnesium nitrate and I said I wanted to use nitric acid and magnesium hydroxide, that means that I would need this second equation here because I'm mixing in a hydroxide, which is a base. I'm using acid plus base to make salt and water. The next thing I would do is to write the word and symbol equations. And I would write these just under um, the general equations that you've picked. So for example, um, say when making sodium chloride, we use the sodium carbonate and hydrochloric acid. I would write my general equation out first, then just underneath that I would write um, the word equation, hydrochloric acid plus sodium carbonate makes sodium chloride, water and carbon dioxide, and then just under that I would start to put in the symbol equation and I've got that straight, um, straight underneath that. Now it's really um, common in a exam to write a word equation and when you come across to, write, uh, to writing water, a lot of people tend to go straight ahead and write H2O instead of the word water. If it's a word equation that the assessment wants, then make everything in that equation a word. Same thing goes for carbon dioxide. In the second example we had in our question, um, to make magnesium nitrate, We've got nitric acid and magnesium hydroxide. We said the general equation we would pick was acid and base make salt and water. Let's put the word equation in first. We have nitric acid, magnesium hydroxide, magnesium nitrate, water. After that, write the symbols in. Nitric acid, um, MgOH2, MgNO3 with brackets and a 2, and H2O. What you could also do in your um, in your method when you're describing any separation technique say in step 4 is that you might also decide to include a diagram. So if you are using a filtration step you'll want to set up a funnel um, with filtering paper and um, you want to say that you are pouring in your mixture in here which contains solid and you are going to pretty much be left behind with just liquid um, in your beaker. After that, because you always have an evaporation step, that's where you come across to here. You include an evaporating dish, you pour your mixture in here, and you want to imply to the marker, or show the marker rather, that um, 
you are letting the solution sit in sunlight so it can evaporate. Either that or you're going to draw a Bunsen burner underneath and show that you are going to heat the mixture to remove any excess water so that in the end all you'll have left over is a solid salt crystal. Finally, um, if in the question you have uh, any other salts that you were required to talk about but you haven't yet, then that's what you need to do in step 8. So just to recap, in step 1 we picked an acid, in step 2 we chose a base, in step 3 we wrote the first step of our method where we combined the acid and the base, and these first three points are pretty much only worth like, the only like achieved level type points. Once you describe some separation techniques with enough detail, if it's only got say one step for a separation technique, so it could be say um, you only needed to filter something or you only described filtering something, then you might get say a merit for it, but you've got to do it in detail. Um, if you describe say two separation techniques, then that might bump you up to a E level type or it might award you another merit point. Selecting a general equation, if you're lucky, might be worth an achieved point, otherwise they tend to give the achieved point just for writing the word equation. The symbol equation itself is essentially worth a merit, but if you balance it, it can actually go up to an E. Drawing a diagram is pretty much the same as trying to describe separation techniques or trying to describe writing down the first step of your method. It really depends on how much detail you get into in your method. If you can repeat steps 1 to 7 for all of your salts, then um, that pretty much starts bumping you up towards um, E for your overall question. But remember, you've got to go around the cycle perfectly. Now, if you've had difficulty following any particular of those eight steps during um, this video, check that you are able to do these 15 things because these 15 things were all the skills um, that you needed in order uh, to be able to get around that full cycle of eight steps.